Hello everyone, we will continue with this course evaluation of textile material and today we will discuss another parameter which is extremely important for particularly for span yarn that is yarn and fabric hairiness. So, hairiness basically it is a in most of the applications hairiness it is a uh, the property which is not desirable. Okay. Why I am saying it is a most of the applications there are some applications where fabric hairiness is required particularly for some particular effect or yarn in yarn hairiness some special effect if we need in those applications hairiness is important we need hairiness in fabric we sometime try to brush the fabric surface to get more and more hair to have certain special effect velvet like effect or to get some warmth or uh, softness okay. and here in this class we will try to see the different aspects of hairiness their causes or their effects and also we will see the how to measure there are different uh, principles of measurement we will see the different principles of measurement here. So, it is a most undesirable most of the circumstances it is basically an undesirable property we do not need we need a yarn with free of hairs okay. and if at all some hairs are there there are some techniques to eliminate this hair like singeing shearing. So, these are the techniques and the ring span yarn like compact span yarn is developed where the hairs are almost not there it is almost absent problem is not only the visual appearance, but it gives problem with the production of fabric and fabric production it creates problem and it deteriorates the fabric appearance due to that protruding hairs it makes the fabric appearance dull okay. that is uh, due to that random uh, reflection fabric looks a little bit dull and now how to measure the hairiness it is actually there are various techniques I will discuss in detail the measurement technique actually depending on the techniques of measurement the number of hairs or result changes. Okay. So, measurement of hairiness depend on the method chosen for detecting the hair it can be number of hairs per unit length of yarn or can be total length of hair protruding beyond the yarn surface. So, this techniques we will discuss here now it is not possible to represent hair with a single parameter okay. because the number of hairs and the length of hairs both vary independently okay. they, they are they are not dependent. So, length of hair the thing is that suppose we have two yarns yarn A having large number of hairs on the surface, but the lengths are smaller length large number of hairs with smaller length this is yarn A another yarn yarn B is having fewer 
hairs, but the length of hair are longer. Now, as far as the measurement technique, if we try to measure the length of hair, total length of hair. of hair protruding beyond the yarn surface, if we try to measure per unit length of yarn, suppose this is the unit length of yarn, here it is a unit length and if we try to measure the length total calculate the length of hair protruding. So, this total lay hairs 1, 2, 3, 4 whatever number of hairs if we totally add all this hair length okay, L i this is the total length of hair in yarn A and here if we add total length of hair L dash i in yarn B and it may so happen this are equal because if we add all this length of hair here the smaller length or number of hairs more and larger length number of hairs are small and if we add this two and then we try to find the total length of hairs protruding beyond the yarn surface these are coming out to be same equal then our conclusion will be that hairiness of with these two yarns are same, but problem is that that the actual appearance or actual effect on different characteristics of fabric or processing performance will be entirely different. So, measurement of length may create some problem. On the other, so to counteract this problem, what we can have, we can have the we can measure the number of hairs in terms of number of hairs protruding beyond certain specified length. Okay, so suppose there are this is a length of three millimeter. So we will try to measure the number of hairs more than 3 millimeter. Okay. So, this will give us an indication that the yarns are full of hair okay. and now they in that case this will actually differentiate between these two, but if we use the same technique here same technique in this yarn B same technique means the number of hairs beyond 3 millimeter in that case the suppose this is say 10 millimeter. So, 12 millimeter another yarn another hair it is a 6 millimeter another 4 millimeter okay, 5 millimeter. In that case this technique of 3 millimeter beyond 3 millimeter this yarn will give the it is a all this hair will come into the picture. Okay. Now, this yarn B now let us take another yarn it is a C yarn with a with hairs which are just 3.5 millimeter this hairs length are 3.5 millimeter. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, okay, let us say 5 years. Now, here also, if we use 3 millimeter distance length of hair, this will give us the hair count number of hairs per unit length. This is the unit length, number of hairs per unit length for both the yarns, it will give us 5. So, effectively actually 
this B and E ions they are in as far as hairiness is concerned they are totally different in characteristics. So, this total methods of measurement it creates problem and confusion. Okay. So, that we should be very careful in interpreting data we have to see the which technique has been used. So, all this both the techniques are being used, but we have to see that which technique we cannot the we cannot compare our result data from one instrument one method to the result of other method. So, this problem of yarn C or this here that can be solved to some extent by not by using only one that uh, sensor if we can use uh, multiple sensors which will give idea about the length distribution length of hair distribution okay distribution of length say more than 3 millimeter how many this uh, hairs are there between 3 to 4 millimeter how many hairs are there. So, like that one can get idea detailed idea. Another problem of uh, hairiness measurement is that suppose we if we measure in this method. So, what we see the method of measurement by say length of hair it is it gives us clear idea about the total uh, length of hair appearance. Whereas, this measurement of total length total length of hair. So, one is the number based number based. So, this one is number based this one again number based number of hairs, but the principle which we have discussed this is the total length of hair. Okay. Total length of hair we have measured here, but main another problem with this uh, number measurement is that suppose the hairs are longer. Okay. Now, the hairs are longer hairs. Okay. Now, this is the hair. Okay. Now, if we want to measure the length of hairs protruding number of hairs number of hairs protruding beyond say say 5 millimeter we want to measure beyond 5 millimeter what is the number of hair in that case so this is this is the yarn it will move and the move due to, due to the movement of hair do movement movement of the yarn the hairs will come across against the air drag. The due to the air drag this hairs will have situation like this they may lie they are the al alignment may change and also during the movement they the yarn will pass through some guide something. So, the, this hair will not be straight. So, in that case if we try to measure the number of hairs beyond certain the projected length in that case we will have wrong result. Because, so one hair of this type this is a smaller hair this is a longer hair the hair A is a smaller hair hair B is longer hair, but this A the if we try to measure the number of hair beyond certain length. So, this is the length beyond certain certain projected length. So, this if the projected length is this one. So, A will be counted as a hair, but it will miss B here, because the the measurement of number of hairs protruding beyond certain length of the uh, beyond the yarn surface that is good the good indication, but the problem comes here if the hair alignment it depends the result depends on the hair alignment. 
So, if the yarn passes through a guide fine guide the totally hairiness reading will change. So, in that case the measurement of number of hairs has some problem. So, the main solution is that in that case the measurement of total length of hair. If the if we measure the total length of hair then whatever may be the alignment of fibers beyond the surface that will be totally measured. This will the system will measure total length. So, the two methods are there one is measuring the number of hairs another is measuring the total length of hair they have their positive point as we have discussed and negative point. So, if we have to if we test the yarn hairiness using one of these techniques we have to we have to be careful in selecting the parameters. Okay. So, so, number of hairs and the length of hairs one can select one of these. Okay. A yarn may have small number of long hairs or a large number of short hairs or any combination of this. So, that depending on the type of hairs one can select the problem is then which combination should be given higher hairiness rating these things we have discussed. Okay. So, this uh, techniques they have got their positive and negative points. Now, we will discuss the various reasons various causes of hairiness. Okay. First if we talk about the cotton yarn the first reason is that it is a maturity. It has been observed that immature cotton results hairiness because it, it does not get opened it is a it actually does not penetrate inside the yarn structure it remains in the surface and it creates hairiness. Okay. So, in case of cotton 70 percent maturity of the fibers is needed. Okay if the maturity is less. So, uh, when we discuss the maturity we have seen around 70 percent matured fiber should be there. Okay. If it is less then that causes hairiness immature and dead fibers result hairiness because they do not penetrate inside the yarn structure. Another thing is that uniformity ratio what is uniformity ratio that we have discussed it is the ratio of 50 percent span length divided by the 2.5 percent span length and the and it is a it is expressed in percentage and normal cotton it is ranging from 40 to 50 percent. Now, if the here uniformity ratio is less what does it show uniformity ratio is less means it has got it contains large quantity of short fibers. Okay. Large quantity of short fibers means those short fiber will not penetrate in the yarn structure, those will not take part in migration and those will come in out that will the, those will be projected outside the yarn surface okay. as they will not be taking part in the proper migration. So, if it is less then hairiness is the less means it is a that uh, short fiber percent is more. Next is that raw material. So, it is a micron air. So, so, after the maturity then it is a micron air value. So, micron air it is uh, important if we have uniform micron air then the total or most of the fiber will take part in the yarn structure part. But if micron air varies if the standard deviation or C V percent of micron air or range of micron air increases then that what does it mean it means that it has got a coarse fiber along with the fine fiber. So, the if it is a mixture of coarse and uh, fine fiber then the coarser fiber will have tendency 
to come out from the yarn structure and produce hairs. So, the micronear range is in for cotton. So, normal say cotton say for with 4 micro 4.2 micronear it is a plus minus 2 is the range. If it is within this range then the, the problem of hairiness is uh, will not be too much that is the acceptable range, but if it is more. So, it has been observed that micronear value of 4.2 plus minus 0.6 results in increase in hairiness which is used in flannel like fabric having soft feel. So, this this has got its use this if we have if we want to some we want to have some fabric which has got flannel like uh, filling then we need cotton with higher variability in micronear. In some if we need this type of fabric it has been actually one can always try to mix two different varieties of cotton with different micronear value then we can create hairiness. So, if the hair micronear value ranges too much then it will create hairiness and another problem is that hairiness will result low yarn strain because if the hairiness is less means the most all the fibers are inside the yarn structure ok no hairs. So, that means all individual fibers will take part in the tension in the strength it will individual all the fibers will take their contribute give their contribution, but if we have high number of hairs very high number of hairs. So, if hairs this hairs protruding hair will not take part in the in uh, strength, but will take part in mass. So, the total linear density of yarn say so both this yarns linear densities will be same, but the effective number of fibers taking part in strength will be much less in case of the yarn with higher hairiness. So, effective hair strength of this yarn will be low. Then problem there is a major problem in sizing. So, if there is a hairiness, so the, the yarn is fuzzy with high amount of uh, hairs, then what will happen? So, if we apply say size material here in this yarn if we apply size material. So, size will be applied here as well as as it is directly in contact with the surface they will penetrate inside the structure. So, which we actually want ok that will create required characteristics, but here in the yarn with higher hairiness if we apply size this will be actually blocked by the hairiness in the surface and size will not penetrate inside. So, yarn quality and strength and other quality parameters will get affected it will actually create on coating this stiff size coating at the surface and during and the yarn will be very stiff and so that this size coating will be removed during weaving process and the higher breaka breakage will occur. So, that uh, the sizing process needs hair less quantity of hairiness. So, if the if yarn is fuzzy size material will not penetrate to the required amount and a greater amount will accumulate on the yarn surface ok and coating is more and penetration is less. So, that will create we mean sizing penetration is very important if it is only coating in the surface that will after drying this coating will be very stiff and they will come out during during weaving operation and then the yarn will be as uh, like uh, unsized yarn and it will immediately break. So, higher breakage will occur if the yarn is hairy ok. Shading problem is there. So, if the yarn 
suppose we are using two ply yarn double yarn where sizing is not there. In that case, in case of air jet cleaner set, so total clear set is not produced which is important. Okay. Similarly, if yarn density in the fabric is more like warp in warp number of warp thread is more then consecutive threads during up and down motion the due to hairiness it will create higher friction and that will not actually that will not, not allow clear shade formation and breakage may occur okay. and it is a wearing out of the uh, of different machine part like drop wire, heel wire for any other different machine part through which the yarn passes due to the hairiness it will actually this it, it will it will damage the machine part and also in a knitting knitting the knitting needle will uh, be worn out and quickly and it will create the problem may be it will damage the fabric also. And obviously, fabric will have poor appearance that I have already mentioned due to the due to unequal reflection okay. uneven reflection like one uh, this is one fabric with a clear surface okay. this is fabric. without any hairiness. This is another fabric with large number of hairs on the surface. Now, when light comes this will this fabric clean fabric with will have regular relief reflection. So, that will create the shiny nature, but here this will create a random reflection. So, that will make the, the fabric surface dull in loop. Okay. So, fabric appearance will be poor and also it will have uh, the peeling and many other uh, effects. Okay. Now, we will see the measurement techniques how to measure the hairiness. So, that it is a undesirable property we have discussed and it gives indication of the problem of prickliness. Okay. It creates problem of prickliness and the measurement of hairiness is actually dependent on the method chosen okay. that we have discussed already and also we have mentioned it is not possible to represent hairiness with a single parameter, because the number of hairs and length of hairs both vary independently. A yarn may have a small number of long hairs or a large number of short hairs or any combination of that. So, the problem is then which combination should be given higher hairiness rating. Okay. So, that different combinations I have discussed that measurement of hairiness in uh, by measuring the number of hairs or by measuring the length of hairs will create different problems. Okay. So, we will stop here will continue in the next class when we will discuss the all the measurement techniques of yarn hairiness. Thank you.